Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Because of the size of aircraft carriers like the U.S. Navy Nimitz class, these vessels require a steady maintenance system. While underway, the aircraft carrier can cater to most of its maintenance needs, even testing jet engines aboard. Within a Nimitz-class carrier, the Jet Repair Facility, a vital nucleus of technical prowess strategically situated aft, operates as a critical center for aviation maintenance excellence. This compact, efficiently organized space is a hive of specialized activity, where skilled technicians engage in the intricate repair and maintenance of jet components, leveraging advanced technical manuals and diagnostic equipment. The layout is meticulously designed for maximum efficiency, featuring designated workstations for avionics diagnostics, propulsion system repairs, and structural integrity assessments. Precision tools and state-of-the-art machinery, including CNC lathes and 3D printers, facilitate the precise fabrication and refurbishment of parts. Illuminated by LED task lighting, the shop's environment is optimized for both delicate electronic work and robust mechanical refurbishments. This area is divided into two essential zones. An electronic repair section equipped with cutting-edge fault diagnosis equipment for quick discovery and correction of avionic problems. and a propulsion repair zone, where gas turbine engines are methodically disassembled, inspected, and reassembled. High-purity workstations are allocated for delicate optical and sensor equipment, which requires dust-free conditions to ensure the integrity of high-precision components. An inventory management system based on RFID technology ensures a simplified supply chain for crucial spare parts, which has a direct impact on aircraft turnaround times. Advanced welding stations with inert gas systems enable professional repair of aircraft structures, demonstrating the combination of traditional expertise and cutting-edge technology. But how does this process work? When an engine is brought in to the repair shop, skilled technicians do an induction check for signs of damage or wear. This first evaluation indicates the parts that are needed to be ordered, which then initiates the reassembly process. Over the next three to four days, technicians carefully put the engine back together following strict rules and specs. After being put together, the engine goes through an important step called operating verification. It's put through many tests for three to four hours, and the test can last for days if something goes wrong. This test makes sure that speed and dependability standards are met or beaten. After the test, the engine goes through a thorough check to ensure it's ready to be used again. The engine is then sent back to its squadron. Moving from heavy engines to heavy munitions. Munitions for aircraft carriers are stored in the magazine deep inside the vessel. To bring those munitions to the flight deck and be attached to their aircraft, a munitions lift is used. In the Gerald R. Ford class carrier, 
The munitions lift can carry loads of up to 70,000 pounds to the flight deck, but normal operating weight is 24,000 pounds. On the flight deck, it's taken directly to the appropriate aircraft. Aviation ordnance men who are skilled in weapons and munitions add joint direct attack munition kits to bombs in the ship's magazine, which is a secure area for storing and putting together ordnance. By adding a guidance kit to unguided bombs, the process turns them into precision guided weapons. This includes adding a tail section to the bomb with inertial guidance and GPS devices which are very important for hitting targets precisely. All munitions end up on the flight deck. The flight deck on the USS Gerald R. Ford is strategically divided to allow for efficient aircraft management. The landing deck, which features innovative arresting gear for arresting and restraining fast landing aircraft, is scrupulously maintained for safe and efficient operations. Adjacent to this on the port side is a third elevator lift known as EL-3 a key site where aircraft are parked and then lowered down to the main hangar deck. A small strip stretching outward from the EL-3 is known as the finger, and it's used as an additional personnel workspace. This layout allows for a more efficient flow of aircraft between landing, parking, and takeoff zones, which improves the carrier's operational readiness, sortie rates, and safety. On the flight deck, there are four jet blast deflectors. These panels rise from the flight deck and divert jet blast away from personnel and other aircraft. A JBD operator operates the system from a dedicated hatch on the flight deck. There is also an operating position next to the runway. Once aircraft are in position, the JBD must be raised to ensure a safe takeoff, especially with full afterburners. Everything on aircraft carriers doesn't always go according to plan. Therefore, emergency protocols are rehearsed to handle JBDs that malfunction for whatever reason. On the flight deck, plane captains, designated enlisted personnel, and aviation ordnance men work together to do minor maintenance on an FA-18 Super Hornet, maintaining operational readiness. The plane captain conducts a series of pre-flight checks, the most important of which are fuel tests to ensure the purity and absence of impurities. This ensures the jet's propulsion system remains uncompromised. Using portable testing kits, samples are extracted from the aircraft's fuel system and examined for water, particles, and integrity. Concurrently, aviation ordnance men methodically check the installation and performance of missiles, explosives, and onboard guns to ensure they are battle ready. Aircraft are stowed in the hangar deck of the carrier and brought to the deck via aircraft elevator. The aircraft elevator of an aircraft carrier is a wonder of naval engineering built to effectively carry aircraft between the flight deck and the hangar bay. This elevator system has a huge flat platform that covers around 4,000 square feet 
and can carry up to 80,000 pounds, roughly the weight of two FA-18 Super Hornets. It runs on a sophisticated electromechanical or hydraulic system, which enables smooth and rapid vertical movement. The elevator's platform is large enough to accommodate most carrier-based aircraft, making it critical for speedy aircraft deployment and recovery operations, which help the carrier maintain its operational tempo. Inside the hangar deck of the USS Gerald R. Ford, a hive of activity keeps the fleet's aircraft maintained, repaired, and ready for action. Uniquely, the Gerald R. Ford has two hangar bays on its hangar deck. Under the supervision of the hangar deck officer, aircraft handlers coordinate the exact movement of planes, utilizing tractors and the ship's integrated systems. These specialists position aircraft for repair or prepare them for elevator transport to the flight deck. Furthermore, the hangar deck acts as a crucial supply channel, with forklifts and staff fluidly transferring ammunition, components, and provisions. During underway replenishment, most cargo and stores are brought to the hangar deck for distribution. In an aircraft carrier's hangar bay, Specialist teams of Navy Aviation Maintenance Duty Officers and enlisted aviation machinist mates, aviation electricians, and airframes and avionics technicians work together to perform complete aircraft maintenance. These specialists use various tools and diagnostic equipment to inspect and repair engines, electrical systems, and airframes. They thoroughly inspect each aircraft for structural integrity, ensuring all components fulfill strict safety requirements. Their job is guided by technical documents, which include precise standards. This meticulous upkeep ensures that each aircraft is reliable and ready for deployment. Another important part of the carrier is the weld and repair shop a crucial support center located deep within the ship, where highly qualified hull maintenance technicians undertake critical metalwork and fabrication jobs. This shop is equipped with cutting edge welding equipment such as MIG, TIG and stick welders, as well as plasma cutters and metal lathes, and can handle a wide range of repair and fabrication work. From repairing damaged ship components to manufacturing bespoke pieces needed urgently for operations. HTs can work with a variety of metals while adhering to tight safety regulations. Then there is the tire shop. The tire shop on an aircraft carrier is a must-have facility for maintaining and repairing aircraft tires. which are critical for safe takeoffs and landings. The shop, run by aviation structural mechanics, is equipped with tools and machinery for tire examination, inflation, and replacement. These expert professionals use accuracy to monitor wear and tear. The environment is strictly controlled to avoid mishaps and specialist equipment is utilized to handle the high-pressure nitrogen used in aviation tires. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are not only powerful floating Air Force bases, but they even have the specialist workspaces and personnel required to maintain systems. From the specialists who handle munitions to the men and women who repair and maintain the aircraft, these carriers have it all. No wonder they're referred to as supercarriers.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.